Why, hello there, and welcome back to not only surviving, but thriving while living in tantalizing, terrific Thailand. Welcome to... Well, actually, even I don't even know where the hell we are today. Listen, this is all about, again, surviving and thriving. Here are the top five mistakes that people make when coming to live in Thailand. This is not people who are just visiting, etc. These are actually mistakes that we make when we decide to come and live in absolute paradise. Guys, let's just jump in. These are honestly, believe it or not, in some semblance of order. Yes, believe it or not, I actually took the time to, yeah, put them in order. Let's go. Now, this one I absolutely hate talking about because I am not a visa expert and I have I've stressed this point a thousand times. Listen, please go and talk to an actual professional about this. A lot of guys come here and they they make so many wrong choices and they pick the wrong visa, etc., etc. I am, as I have told you guys a million times, I'm on the tourist visa. I love the tourist visa because it allows me, or I should say it forces me to get out of the country once in a while and go on an adventure. I love to travel around and for me the tourist visa makes it so that I have to go and explore different places. Because of the new taxation laws here and I am doing a video guys so please I promise you three to five days I'm going to release a video about me and how the taxation affects me and why I have made a certain choice that is going to shock the shit out of you guys. The visas, guys, I'm going to tell you something. If you're coming here on the wrong visa, it is a massive mistake. So take the time, learn the proper visas, learn what each visa gives you for benefits, how it hinders living here, etc., etc. Learn about, you know, the education visa, language, Muay Thai. Learn about the 50-year-old visa, the long-term visa, the elite visas, stuff like this, the cost of them and the actual benefits and what they allow you to do and not do while you're here in the kingdom. The visas, guys, I'm gonna tell you something. Again, I hate talking about them because I'm not an expert. I've tried to get a bunch of different people to come and talk about them on my channel, but again, everybody wants to charge me 50, 60,000, 100,000 baht to talk about visas. Do you know how many views I have to get to pay for that? A lot. Anyways, guys, visas. Make sure you're getting the proper one. So what I would do is I would talk to a professional. I would talk to your embassy. Do whatever it takes, but don't make the mistakes that a lot of people are making on these visas. Make sure you have the proper one. I cannot stress enough how important this is, and it is quite simple. Learn some basic Thai, okay? I'm not saying you have to become fluent. I'm not saying that you have to be able to hold a conversation with someone. But learning some basic Thai is a survival skill that you should definitely have. Because if you are the type of person who goes outside of the tourist areas, you're going to be hard pressed to find someone who actually speaks English. And it's nice if you can do more than just Body language and pointing will only get you so far, guys. Try to learn some very basic Thai. There's all kinds of YouTube videos about simple, you know, phrases, etc., etc., that you can watch, you can learn. Learn how to properly address male, female. Because as a male, you end every sentence with krab or kab, whereas a woman ends every sentence with ka. And I've seen lots of guys make the mistake and they're talking to someone and they'll say Swati Ka instead of Swati Krab. And it's kind of funny, but you know, at least they're trying. So again, I would definitely suggest learning at least four or five basic phrases. That way, you know, when you go and you order some food, you can, you know, tell them not spicy. My Alped, you know, when it's all finished, you want to give a tip to someone here in Thailand, and I've talked about tipping, the tipping culture in the Western world compared to Thailand. 
they're not so much looking for a tip as they are a compliment. So if you are able to look at them and go, oh, a Roy Muck Muck, which means delicious, very good, they are going to love that. And the next time you go, they're going to put that much more effort into your food so that your next experience there is going to be fantastic. Also along with this, and I know it's not a phrase, I know it's not learning Thai, but try to assimilate into the Thai culture as much as you possibly can. And one way, guys, I'm gonna tell you this, 99% of the people that move here get a scooter, they're driving a scooter, do yourself a favor and go and get the Thai driver's license. It is so simple, it's so easy to do, and do not just pay some stupid visa company or language school to get it for you. Go and do it yourself because it's a fun experience. Not only that, you will meet some really fascinating, interesting people. And for you single guys, there's tons of girls there that are taking that course. Believe me, the day I was there, it was packed full of, it was great. But not only that, if you're out and you're driving and you get pulled over by the police and you show them that you have a Thai driver's license, they treat you completely different. They are so impressed that you have taken the time to go and do that, that you honestly get, com the way they treat you is completely different, trust me. So if you do go through a spot check one night, and let's say you don't have your helmet on, or you've got a friend in the back who doesn't have a helmet on, and they recognize you, they're just gonna wave you through. Believe me guys, that happens all of the time if they know that you have a Thai driver's license. So again, one of the mistakes people make, they don't learn any Thai at all because, oh, it's so easy, most of the tourist areas speak English and they rely on either the international driver's permit or what they think is their valid driver's license from their home company or country, sorry, which is not a valid license at all. So take some time, learn a little bit of Thai, get your Thai driver's license. Now I'm gonna flat out tell you this one, okay? You do not have to be filthy freaking rich to survive and thrive in Thailand. You can be, you know, relatively okay off. You don't even have to be well off. The biggest thing is, is to understand the value of a dollar and how expensive it is to live here and how much money do you have. Now listen, I know that there's all kinds of guys that watch idiots like me on here talking about, oh, you can live in Thailand for $600 a month, $700, $1,000 a month. All of the time I get people asking me, Doc, can I live on this? Can I live on that? How much money do I need for this? How much money do I need for that? Is this enough? Is that enough? And really honestly, I always tell them the same thing. It comes down to you. Do you know how to budget your money? Because if you do, yes, you can come here and you can live an incredible life and it does not have to be unbelievably expensive. If you're the type of person who has to live month to month on your credit cards back in North America, Europe, wherever you're from, you're gonna fail here. Flat out, I'm gonna tell you straight up, nobody else will tell you, the doc will. You are going to fail here. If you cannot live below your means, you are going to fail here because you have no idea how expensive Thailand can be. Again, a lot of people watch idiots like me and we're going on about this, going on about that. Oh, it's fantastic to live. For me, when I lived back in Canada, I lived extremely well below my means, okay? I had a fantastic life, don't get me wrong. Beautiful house, beautiful cars, vacations. I lived extremely below my means. Um, never had any interest on my credit card because it got paid off every single month, had no debts, nothing. I lived so far below my means that it's, it's hilarious the things that I did to save money, okay? And I did that because I knew that I wanted to be able to retire one day to a tropical paradise, which I have done successfully. When I started doing these videos, okay, please keep in mind, guys, I did the $1,000 a month Thailand's Happiest Hobo as a social media experiment to show people what is possible. Not only that, I started doing them during COVID when there was nobody here and I had nothing else to do. I originally thought I was going to do these really cool videos about traveling and food and nobody wanted to watch them. 
It wasn't until I started talking about girls and cost of living and shit like this that people actually got into watching me. So now I'm a slave to, I'm a slave to my audience. It is what it is. But I was doing these videos because I wanted something to do, something that was enjoyable for me. And quite honestly, I did find it incredibly fun to make those videos. And what it did was it challenged me to go and find things to do that didn't cost me a shit ton of money. Now, I will say this much. I've had guys that have watched me for years that come to Thailand and after two or three months, they're calling me like all mad at me. And all it is is like, you lied to me. You told me this, you told me that. I can't live here like this. I can't live. And I'm like, hold on a minute. Hold on, hold on. Let me ask you this. Are you going to the bars every night? Yeah. You buying lady drinks all the time? Yeah. Got a, uh, got a Thai girlfriend, bar girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why you can't live here, guys, on a limited budget or a hobo's budget. budget. You cannot do it, okay? Also, if you're coming here again and you're thinking that you're going to have a Western diet all of the time, not going to happen on a limited budget. So one of the biggest mistakes guys make when they come to Thailand is that they don't know how much money they have for one thing and how long that money is going to last them or they don't know how to budget and they don't understand just how expensive Thailand can honestly be. Look, Phuket is the most expensive place in, in all of Thailand. I live there and I'm living on an extremely low budget. I have a fantastic life. I love my life. Other people look at my life and they go, I couldn't live like that. You would love to live the way that I live. Trust me. I'm telling you that right now. There might be a few people in the world that'd be like, yeah, no. 90% of the people in the world would love to live my life. Straight up, honest, I have an incredible life. I love it. And again, I've said this many, many times in my videos. I do not believe that I would get that much of a return on my investment by spending more money. I really wouldn't. So again, the guys that I see who are not thriving here are the guys that are coming and do not understand the value of money, how expensive it is here, and the guys that just don't know how to budget. If you don't know how to budget, I'm gonna tell you something. Again, you are going to fail. You're gonna wind up most likely calling your ex-wife or your children or your mom and dad and begging them to send you money just for a plane ticket back home. So before you come here, before you ever come to Thailand, make sure that you know how to live on a budget, make sure you know how much money you have to spend every month, and do not spend more than that. Spend about 75 to 80% of what you actually have to spend, and you will be fine. Not going anywhere besides Phuket or Pattaya. Now listen, I love Phuket, I call it positively Phuket. What really shocks me are the guys that think that Thailand is just Phuket, Pattaya, and Bangkok. And I'm absolutely amazed at how many of these guys will tell me, oh, I've never been here, I've never been there, I've never done this, I've never done that. I'm amazed by it. I met this really nice guy, Jeff, okay? And Jeff and I, we clicked right away. I found Jeff absolutely hilarious the first time I met him. I met him down on the beach at my brother's bar. And uh, we're sitting there having some beers. He's like, you're that guy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're talking. And he gets explaining to me that he's been in Bank, or sorry, he's been on Phuket for 13 or 14 weeks and has never left Patong. As a matter of fact, he has never seen the temple. He's never done anything at all. All he does is he goes to Bangla Road on a nightly basis. That or he does go to Otop once in a while if Bangla Road is dead. Now, when I first met him, Bangla Road could be dead one night, hop in the next. But uh, yeah, he was, he'd never been out of Phuket or Patong at all. And I'm thinking, Thailand is such a wonderful place. So I said to him one time, I said, listen, man, why don't you come with me to Ao Nan? Oh, I, you know, I really don't know, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, dude, it's only three and a half hours away by bike. Let's jump on the bikes. We'll stop along the way see some things. And by the time we got to Ao Nang, he was sold on traveling Thailand. And now he has been all over the entire country. He's been up to Chiang Rai, Chiang Mai, um, Wahin, all the way down to Trang in the southern, in, in the southern part of the, the country. He is 
a temple addict. He loves temples. He sends me pictures all of the times of all of the temples that he's been to. And he's like, man, I'm so happy that you actually showed me this, blah, 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 blah. And I've noticed so many guys, all they do when they search, you know, stuff on YouTube is that they search Phuket, Pattaya, Walking Street, girls, instead of seeing what Thailand actually honestly has to offer. And you would not believe how many people I've talked to that fail here because they don't go and see other things. All of the guys that I know that are thriving, again, it's that whole surviving or thriving thing. The guys that are thriving here, the guys that love it here, they're the ones that are going out and going on adventures and seeing things and traveling the country and going to temples and not just sitting there in bars, pounding the beers back with some bar girl. Again, nothing wrong with bar girls, but if that's your whole life, your life in Thailand is going to be pretty, pretty miserable. It truly is. And I'm going to tell you something. From the temples to the mountains to the rivers to the, the islands, this place just has so much beauty. It truly does. And uh, if you're not willing to look around, you're not going to enjoy your time here. And you're going to be one of those guys that winds up going home and going, oh, Thailand, you know, it's blah, blah, this, it's a cesspool. No, it's a cesspool because you didn't get out of the actual cesspool and see how beautiful Thailand truly is. And uh, that's, that's a terrible shame. So here we are. What is the number one mistake that guys make? Well, you would think that it would be the financial aspect of it, but no, it's not. The number one mistake that guys make that stops them from thriving here is that they fall in love the very first day or at least the first week, okay? Listen, this is like nothing you have ever experienced in your lifetime, okay? Unless you're Brad Pitt, George Clooney, somebody like that, you have never experienced the attention that you're going to get here in Thailand. As soon as you step off the plane, pretty much there's a full lineup of some of the most beautiful women you've ever seen in your life, and they are vying for your attention. And they will do the craziest, nastiest things to get your attention. Believe me when I tell you that, guys, that is just 100% the truth. And what happens is, typically, it's the same guy. I'm not gonna stereotype him. You guys know who I'm talking about, okay? It's the guy that lived his entire life that never dated a girl that was even pretty, you know? Most of his time was spent with, again, I'm not going to use the number scale, but you know what I'm talking about. He's never had the thrill of touching someone so beautiful, so attractive, so sensual. And what happens is they get it in their head that, oh, this girl, you know, this, this girl, that, and that it's, this is the first time it's ever happened. They can't let it go because they don't believe that it's ever going to happen again. And these guys come here and they do, they fall in love with the very first girl. Now, I'm not suggesting that you come here and you be some misogynistic whore or anything like that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is this, if you truly want to thrive living in Thailand, especially as a single male of any age, in the first year that you're here, you should not get into a serious relationship at all. And that could be a transactional relationship. That could just be a regular, take some time and be a butterfly. You'll hear this expression from Thai women all the time. Oh, my father's a butterfly. My husband was a butterfly, blah, blah, blah. A butterfly is someone that essentially floats around and you know, samples all of the flowers around him. I'm just gonna flat out tell you guys, your first year here, what you want to do, if you truly want to thrive living in Thailand, Take as much time, sow all the wild oats that you possibly can, get all of that shit out of your system, do all of the crazy stuff that you have always fantasized about, and then once you've got all of that out of your system, at that point, if you want to look at having a regular girlfriend, be it a transactional relationship, or one that you think is a loving, nurturing relationship, at that point, give it a shot. But I will tell you this much, all of the guys I have seen fail in the first year or less here are the guys that get off the plane, meet a girl, all of a sudden, bam, she's the only one in the world. 
I promise you guys she's not. She's not even the only girl on the street. That's how easy it is to meet women here and how it's just completely different than back at home, okay? So I think the number one mistake that men make when they come here is that they fall in love with the very first girl. Love at first sight was fantastic when you were in grade two or grade three and it was cute and everybody thought it was so adorable. It's not here. It's really not because these girls are trying everything that they can to get you to fall in love with them as soon as you see them. And trust me, they have skills that you can't even imagine to facilitate that goal for themselves. Please guys, if you want to thrive here, do not fall in love or get into a serious relationship in the first year. Enjoy yourself, have fun. Sample everything that Thailand has to offer. Be safe about it, but remember, the guys that are falling in love the first day or week are the guys that are failing and going back home with their tail between their legs. Don't let that be you guys. On that note, listen, I hope you're getting stuff out of these videos. If you are, please hit subscribe, give me a like, leave a comment, talk to me, share your experience. I love hearing from guys. And if you want me to tell your story, you can email me, you can send me a message on Facebook, you can call me, I don't care. I love talking to people. I'm living my best life. I hope you guys are living your best life. I'd like to say I'm enjoying my beer today, but I'm not. I'm drinking a Budweiser Magnum, which is absolutely gross, but uh, it's 5.5% alcohol, and uh, it's making me uh, feel pretty good. Guys, again, live your best life. You only have one in anything less than the best. You know it. Till next time, guys. Cheers.